Chak Sameach, everyone. Happy Tu B'Shvat. I'm so glad to be here with you today, along with my wonderful colleague, Rabbi Ron Goldberg. How are you, Rabbi Ron? I'm doing well. Chag Sameach, everybody. Chag Sameach. It's wonderful that our tradition has this holiday that celebrates trees and nature and everything that this beautiful earth has given to us. And that is really the theme of Tu B'Shvat. Rabbi Ron has a wonderful teaching on this theme. I'm glad you, you brought that up because we, we read in what, one of my favorite songs we do on Shabbat when it's, when it's Rosh Chodesh is Shemaim, Shemaim Adonai Ve'aras Natan Livnei Adam, that the heavens are God, but the earth he's given to man. And that means earth is our responsibility. He's tr God has trusted us with it. And it's our responsibility to take care of it. And as a young Jewish child, I learned early on about this, why? because we had that blue box that we gave to Karen, Karen Kamet Israel, Karen and me, the, the money we gave to redeem the land of Israel, to plant trees in Israel. Why? Because by planting, by cultivation, we recovered the land from, from abuse, we recovered the land from desert and swamp, and we make the desert bloom. To this day, for many Bar, Barabbat Mitzvah children, what do we give them? We plant a tree in Israel in their honor because it shows the connection to the land, and the desire to make the desert bloom and to redeem the land and to take care of the land in, in, in eternity and in perpetuity. Yeah, you know, we have such a special connection to Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. And it's amazing that many of the uh, pioneers who came to Israel uh, were not farmers by profession, including, by the way, my own grandparents. Some of them were doctors or uh, you know, various artisans, professionals, whatever they did, but many of them studied agriculture either before coming to Israel or once they got there in order to use those skills to make the desert bloom and what a beautiful job they've done. It's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, and I, you know, I appreciate that so much. Thinking about Tu B'Shvat, the holiday of the trees, as it relates to growth and greenery in Israel, and I also like to think of Tu B'Shvat as it relates to the environment in general. And our ancestors were unbelievably forward thinking. I want to read to you a text from the Torah. It says in Deuteronomy, when in your war against a city, mm. you have to besiege it a long time in order to capture it, you must not destroy its trees, wielding the ax against them. You may eat of them but you may not cut them down. Are the trees of the field human to withdraw before you into the besieged city? So in other words, our ancestors, while we never liked war, sometimes there was war and they, they considered um, cutting down the tree of your enemy as a type of war crime. Because if a tree is there, you know, of course they had no way of understanding the fact that trees gave oxygen um, and that, uh, you know, the trees take in our CO2. They had no way of knowing that, but they knew the trees were important. They knew it took a while to cultivate a tree, to have enough fruit to be useful and helpful to a community. And they recognized a certain innocence in a tree. You know, the, the tree can't run away, the tree can't fight back. So you can go ahead and pick a few grapefruits or lemons or whatever it is that you need, but, but don't, don't cut down a tree. That's, that's considered unethical. And then there's also one other wonderful text that I want to share with you. It's from Ecclesiastes Rabbah, which is, is Midrash. And this was about, let's say, 1,500 years ago or so that our ancestors said, in the hour when God created the first person, God took the first person to pass before all the trees of the Garden of Eden and said, see my works, how fine and excellent they are. Now all that I have created, I created for your benefit. Think upon this and do not corrupt or destroy it. Don't destroy my world because if you do, there'll be no one to restore it after you. And what I think is so amazing, how could the rabbis have known? This is before they could have known of global warming. It's before toxic waste. It, you know, it's before any of the modern concerns that we have uh, about how to take care of the environment. And yet somehow they understood that we needed to watch after the earth and take care of it. And this is something not only to think about, but to share with your children or grandchildren, if you have family, to talk about how you feel 
about nature and about trees. Rabbi Ron, do you have any favorite aspects of nature? Is there anything in nature that makes you say, you know, kind of, wow? Oh, absolutely. I, I have uh, three things I'll share with you in, in brief. The, the first one, I was lucky enough to, to make a, a cruise to Alaska. And as a place I'd always wanted to visit, but something I was really unprepared for, it's just big. It is green. It just goes on and on and on as far as the eye can see. Forests upon forests with glaciers and snow. And being a, a Los Angeles guy, I don't see snow. So it fascinated me. And I really felt that I was really beholding a, a wonder of just uh, outright amazement that such a place existed. The second one is the Grand Canyon. And we've all seen pictures of it, right? But pictures completely and utterly fail to do it justice. The size, the scope, the scale, the grandeur are just amazing. A little note for me, I'm afraid of heights. I could not get myself to walk any closer to the edge there is a sidewalk that goes along it, and I could not get myself off the sidewalk to look over to see how far it was. It's, it's, it's such a huge size and scope. It's just amazing, and the word amazing just fails to do it justice. And finally, here in California, I love Yosemite. Um, Yosemite, when you, when you drive into the valley, you come to a, um, a lookout point on top of the ridge, and you can look across the valley at the forest, at the pine trees, and, and it goes on and on and on. And you wonder, how could this be? How could all this beauty be so focused in just one spot? And in all, these, in all three of these places, I found myself saying a blessing, thanking God for putting Notina Yofimbo alum, for putting the beautiful things into the world. It was, it was they're all quite amazing. Do you have three? Do you have a couple of favorites? I do, and I love your descriptions. That uh, you really took me there um, as you were talking. Um, yes, uh, a first cousin of Yosemite is Sequoia National Park, mm -hmm. and when I went there, I was absolutely amazed. But I was particularly moved by the General Sherman tree. Uh, I don't know if people have seen it, but the General Sherman tree is the largest living thing on Earth. Um, by sheer volume. In other words, if you could fill it up with water, it would hold more water than even the largest whale. Uh, you could put a bunch of cars in it. I mean, it, it's so huge. And what's really exciting about being in Sequoia, and I read about this because it absolutely happened to me, is that all of the trees are so huge that you lose perspective. And it, you know, one doesn't really look larger the, than the other until you go back home and you see your little trees uh, nearby, but the, the sheer hugeness of these sequoias um, always blows my mind. But I have a couple of things that I, I love about nature that aren't famous places. Any sunset on any beach, any time, hmm. draws a sense of awe from me that I don't have words for. And similarly, every single fruit tree just knocks my socks off. I, I, I know that, you know, it may seem simple, but that a lemon tree makes lemons and an apple tree makes apples and an orange tree makes oranges. It's just so beautiful and so lovely. And I just think that we're so lucky. And these are things that we're, we are sometimes detached from because most of us get our food handed to us on a tray or perhaps at the supermarket. I don't even go to supermarkets anymore. I have most of my food delivered and there's a far cry from just having food arrive to working the land and picking fruit uh, from trees. And I, I just, it never ceases to amaze me. And this is why we've asked our incredible dietary department to present each and every one of you with a variety of fruit. And I know, Rabbi Ron, you have uh, the same plate that people do, don't you? Can yeah, I do. I'm gonna... uh, tell, us, tell us what you have. We have some grapes. Let's see if we can, there we go. Grapes, we have some tangerines, we have some, some dates over here, and we have some, uh, some papaya. All delicious, all fruit of the trees, and I'm looking forward to enjoying them. That's fantastic. Let's enjoy them in just a few moments. 
We also asked the dietary department to make sure that everybody had two grape juices, um, a red one and a white one to do a sort of tasting, um, you know, like a wine tasting or a juice tasting or a fruit tasting. So this isn't a meal, it's a tasting. And the, the purpose is to savor the flavors. So I'm gonna begin by taking uh, my grape juice, my kosher grape juice from the land of Israel, by the way, this is Kedem kosher grape juice imported from Israel, which makes me incredibly happy. And let's make the blessing together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen L'chaim. L'chaim. Rabbi Ron, I don't have the same exact plate that you have. I'll show you what I do have, though. I have blackberries. Nice. And I do have tangerine, just like you. Are, are you going to lead us in the blessing? Let, let's do that. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam borei peri ha'etz. Blessed are you, God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruits of the trees. And we can each do a tasting. What are you going to taste first, Rabbi Ron? I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, the date. Okay, go for go ahead and have the date. I'm going to have my um, my blackberry. Although I guess technically this is not from a tree, is it? It's from a bush, I suppose. I don't know. Is it? It's from a bush, but it's delicious. Yeah, and I hope everybody will take a taste. What are you going to eat next? This papaya is really good. Is it, is it good? All right, while you have your papaya, I think I'm going to have a second blackberry. What's but next, Rabbi Ron? I'm, I'm, I think this is you were talking about, you know, working the land and enjoying the fruits from the tree directly. I think that's always worth a second just to say, you know what? This is good. It this is, is good. good. This is, is good. good. Isn't it amazing also that fruit can grow on a vine, fruit can grow on a bush, fruit can grow on a tree. I, I remember coming to the realization that a tomato might just be a fruit because it grows on a vine like a, like a grape does. All right, so you had your date, you mm -hmm. had your uh, papaya. What are you having next? Working our way around the plate. We're going to have a grape. A oh, grape. enjoy your grape. That sounds delicious. Which again, back to the thing, I think it's a vine, but still it's fruit. Right, it is fruit, yeah. Um, I think the last one that you're gonna have, I do have with me, and that is the tangerine. I happen to be a huge lover of the entire citrus family. I have a lemon tree at my house and there's nothing more satisfying than, you know, I'll be making schnitzel or something. We like to put, um, uh a uh, lemon on our schnitzel and, and I'll, I'll ask one of my kids, hey, can you go out back and, and pick a lemon? And they do, and just slicing a fresh lemon, it, it, the scent of it radiates, I love it. So I'm a big fan of, of uh, citrus. Do you wanna go ahead and we'll eat our tangerines? I was just gonna say among the many reasons I do, I do like you and I now discover that you properly put lemon on your schnitzel, which is any right thinking person knows is the only way to enjoy it. There are, just just my personal opinion. Very interesting. You know, I've also seen people put tomato and garlic on schnitzel, which can be interesting too. But I think you're right that that the best way to go is lemon. I'm going to have a little bit more of the tangerine. And I want to encourage everybody else to go ahead and eat all the fruit on the plate. And I think that we should say the Sheikh Yanu because we've arrived at a sacred moment. And that is the moment of Tu B'Shvat. By the way, has anyone ever noticed that the lightest holidays on the Jewish calendar, and by light, I mean the least serious and intense, hmm. you know, not like Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, which are, are heavy and serious, or Shavuot, which is very serious, Passover. The lightest holidays all come in the winter. And I really believe that our rabbis had in mind that winter can be a very serious time. We certainly know hmm. this winter has been pretty heavy for us. And so you have these three winter holidays that are just fun and delightful, Hanukkah and Tu B'Shvat, and a month from now, we will be celebrating Purim as well. And we'll, we'll get more into that in the future. So let's make the Sheikh Yanu. Please join me in singing it. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sheikh Yanu Vekimanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh Ah 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 Well, 
something really exciting that's about to happen. Here, I'll give you a hint. Here's my watering can. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, what Rabbi Ron and I decided to plan for this Tu Bishvat is that we would each plant a tree at our respective campuses. So please come and join us as we plant trees at Eisenberg Village and at Grand Cell Village. And by the way, we hope that some of you in the future will help to keep these trees watered. Come outside with us. We're on the way. Hi everyone. Well, we're out here with a brand new Japanese maple tree. And we're gonna do a planting. I'm gonna pull it into the hole in the earth. And then my good friend Beto is gonna cut off the sides of the plastic. Day of Tu Bishvat, the, the, the Arbor Day, the birthday of the trees, and I want to tell a quick story about it. We're told in times gone by the story of Kony the Circle Maker, Kony Haaragal, and he was famous for making it rain, but he was also famous for one day he's walking down the road and he sees a man planting a tree, a carob tree, and a carob tree takes 70 years to come to bear fruit. He says to the man, why are you planting that? You're never going to see the benefits of the, of the fruit of that tree. The man says to Phony, my grandfather planted trees so I could enjoy them. I plant this one so my grandchildren can enjoy it. So we plant trees like this today, not just so we can enjoy it now, but in the Phony's example, so that our children and those who come after us will also have a chance to enjoy it. That was so much fun. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, very much. It was great to it was great to be outside outside and beautifying the campus. I hope everybody gives a chance to come by and, and, and see the beautiful trees that we planted. We'll have to show everyone and uh, maybe everyone at some point will have a chance to actually water with our brand new watering cans. That'd be a lot of fun. Nice. All right, remarkably, I only know one Tu Bishvat song, but it's really a beautiful song because it talks about almond trees blooming, which of course are a big part of uh, Israel's landscape, the beautiful Shkadia. Ha porachat, ha shemesh pazorachat, tzipori merosh kol gag mevasrot et bohechag, tu vishvar higia chag lailanot, tu vishvar higia chag lailanot. The almond tree is growing, the golden sun is glowing, Birds come out in joyful glee from every roof and every tree. Tu Vishvat is here, happy holiday. Tu Vishvat is here, happy holiday. Chag Sameach, everybody. Happy Tu Vishvat. Chag Sameach, happy Tu Vishvat, everyone. <laughs>